to December's edition of Why So Serious. Yay! Blogging heads. Rory Cashin. This is our last one, I guess, of the year. We've done loads. About 16? I think it's 16. Seems like more. But, uh, but this is like the end of the year. So it's December. It's the end of December. It is. So we have to talk about you Lots know, of the movies of December. The third best movie of the month of December of the year 2012 is Safety Not Guaranteed. I haven't seen this, so I'm going to hand it over to the lovely Broken Um What kind of film is Safety Not Guaranteed? Is it like a comedy or drama? It's um, uh, kind of a, a dramedy. Romantic a romantic dramedy, uh, yeah. A rom drum crime? That. Romantic crimery? <laughs> Thank you, Rory. Um, Safety Not Guaranteed. Um, Mark Duplass plays Kenneth and he puts an ad in the paper for um, a companion to go time travelling with him and um, a magazine notices this ad and sends people out to investigate and find out more and Aubrey, du- Aubrey Plaza from Parks and Rec is one of the interns on the magazine and she ends up forming a relationship with Kenneth. Um, unlike most time travel films it's not actually about the time travel it's more about the relationships that these people form and the impact that their past has had on them as well. So it's not about getting somewhere, it's about the journey in order to get to get somewhere. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm. Um, Mark Duplass has had an amazing year. He's uh, written and directed Jeff Who Lives at Home with his brother Jay Duplass. And he's in The League, the TV show, which is complete departure for him. Um, he should be playing these kind of mumblecore sweet, nice characters <laughs> in The League. He's playing the exact opposite of that. And he was in People Like Us. So out of ten. <laughs> out of ten. Seven. Mm, out of ten. Solid. Yeah. The second best film of December was The Hobbit, an unexpected journey. Mm. An unexpected entry into our top three, to be honest. <laughs> Part one of the Hobbit trilogy. Jackson's back behind the camera. After Lord of the Rings, um, Ian McKellen is back and is fantastic again as Gandalf the, Gandalf Grey. the Grey, thank you very much. <laughs> um, Martin Friedman plays a young Bill Bob Baggins and it was perfect casting. Absolutely. Uh, there's 13 dwarves, we're not going to get into them all. They're oh. all... They're all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically Bill goes off on an adventure to help these 13 dwarves get their home back from Smog, a P.O.'d dragon, which doesn't really appear until part two, which yeah. is next year. Yeah. Um, it takes a while to get going. First 45 minutes or so also. It takes a takes a while. Once they leave, the Shire picks up the pace mm. and gets very good towards the end. Andy Serkis is back as Gollum oh. uh, for the scene of the movie and one of those best scenes of the year. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Good job, Andy Serkis. Not quite as good as, the, as any of the films in the original trilogy, no. I would say, but no. still one of the better blockbusters that has been this year IMO um, the problem with The Hobbit is that you end up looking at all the technical stuff um, as opposed to the story and everything that's going on there in terms of the story I think um, it's a very very slow very dragged out um, and that's because they've split a very short book into three parts yeah they've brought in bits from the Silmarillion and all the Forgotten Tales and stuff like that the Tolkien wrote to accompany all of these stories but it does feel very stretched out. Um, just to mention the technical though, the um, 48 frames a second happens in there. Um, so, so everything looks like Coronation Street. Yeah, I was not a fan of this at all. Um, it was great to see it in IMAX. Yeah. First IMAX cinema in Ireland in many a year. Shout out to Cineworld IMAX. Woo! Thank you, Cineworld. Um, yeah, I mean, it looked great in IMAX. The 3D, as usual, was pretty pointless, but... Um, it, it is the 48 frames a second that everyone's talking about. But let's not be like them. No. Let's not mention it too much. We've mentioned it. Move on. Yeah. No. Out of 10? Um, 7 again for me. I would give it 8. So then... About seven and 7.5. And seven and and so, yeah. so, the number one movie of December of 2012 was... Life of Pi! Yay! I read the book and I loved it. Um, the film does the best it can, I think to get the story across but there's so much that would be impossible almost to get across because there's a lot of the debates of religion in someone's head mm. you can't put that in the film really so it's all about the visuals and it looks amazing yes. um, 
Every single scene looks like a screensaver. Yeah. Um, Pi is a young man whose family decide to leave India. They sell their zoo and they leave India for America. And while sailing between the two countries, the ship sinks. And Pi and five other animals? Four, four. or five? Four other animals are the only survivors. And he is adrift in the ocean for, ooh, ages. A couple of hundred days, anyway. Yeah, yeah, long time. Yeah. Um, it, like we said, it's beautiful. Absolutely. The 3D actually works really well. Yeah. There is some uh, CGI, well, there's actually quite a bit of CGI, and it, but it all looks mostly photorealistic, so that's good. Yeah, the tiger looks amazing. Yeah. The tiger looks really incredible for an, an animal that's been CG'd in. Yeah. Incredible. Um, and the meerkats. The meerkats. The meerkats. The actor. Sora Sharma. His first time acting, and he was... Phenomenal. Absolutely. Like, you know, he's really put through the ringer yeah. in every way an actor can be and uh, did really well. Yeah, outstanding. Uh, and Ang Lee just did like a really, really bang up job. Yep. Good work, Ang Lee. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what else to say about it. Like, I'd say, I got, it's one of those films that you might not actually go to see because you think, I'll oh, wait for it in DVD. Don't. But because of the nature of it, because it is so beautiful, I would. Full, fully recommend go see it on as big a screen as possible. Yeah. I heard it's being possibly re-released in IMAX at the start of next year. Oh, so that'd be fun. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it then. Out of ten. No. Uh, I would give that a eight as well. So we're up to eight and a half. So mm-hmm. that's why it's the best film. Yeah. The... I mean, there are what? issues with it, but I like them. Yeah. Yeah. The worst of December 2012. Yes, the third worst movie of December 2012 was The Oranges. The Oranges. It wasn't all that bad, The Oranges. No, but it wasn't all that good either. No. Stars Hugh Laurie <laughs> and Leighton Meester or Light. Leighton Meester. Her. Her. Who are. Spell checks. Worst nightmare. Yeah. Um, and Hugh Laurie is the father of one family, and across the road lives his best friend, this other family, and the girl with the name is the daughter of that family, and they start having an affair. Mm. And. Um, it kind of tears the friendships apart and all the rest of it. Um, to me, it kind of felt like what would have happened if Angela Hayes and Lester Burnham had got together in American Beauty, um, because Alison Janney plays a character very similar to Carolyn Burnham, so you could see how maybe the writers of this film watched American Beauty too many times and decided to see what would happen between Lester and Angela. Uh, to me, it felt like too much of a TV movie. It had... All these actors from TV shows, like I had Hugh Laurie's from House, mm. Lee Meester was Gossip Girl? I think so, yeah. For the OC? One of them. No, Gossip Girl. Uh, Adam Brody is the OC. Mm. Uh, Oliver Platt was the West Wing, I think. No, the other woman. What's her name? Alison the mother. Jenny. Alison Jenny. Alison Jenny was the, the West Wing, and then, yeah. And, uh, and then the director did Sex and City TV episodes, Entourage TV episodes, and The Office USA TV episodes. And uh, maybe Fionke from yes, Arrested from Arrested Development. She was she in the up as well. So to me, it just felt like a crappy TV movie. Yeah, it was just generally <laughs> mediocre. Mediocre, yeah. And it's really disappointing because like Catherine Keener, Alison Janney, Oliver Platt, Hugh Laurie—they're all amazing, amazing actors. But they came together in this really awful film. They deserve better. Yeah, they do. So do we. Mm. So do you. Yeah. So, out of ten. Four? Four is fair. Yeah. 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 Four. It tried, but it failed. Yeah. Uh, the second worst movie of December 2012 was Parental Guidance. Which I thankfully avoided. Billy Crystal and Bette Midler are grandparents uh, to these three. How do I put this? Uh, problem children. They all have their issues. Uh, and their mother is Marissa Tomei, who has to go away with her husband on a, on a weekend business trip, so the grandparents are brought into babysitting. Uh, and they live in this house, which is completely run by an automated system. And because they're grandparents, they don't know how to use technology, uh, so they have to deal with the house and the grandkids. That sounds like Home Alone. It, it, it was not funny. The whole thing basically came down to, the, to grandparents are always right, and um, them not using technology isn't a life choice, it's because technology is bad. Mm. Everything about it was, was aimed at like 70 year old people to tell them, you know, that you're right, the way you're living, as curmudgeonly old people. Mm. It wasn't funny. Mm. Uh, I, I hated awful. all the kids. You're meant to feel bad for them, but I didn't. 
One of them had like an imaginary friend who was a kangaroo who kept like telling him to run out into the road. That's a really dangerous imaginary <laughs> friend to have. This is poor. It's terrible. Out of ten. <sighs> Two. So the worst movie of December 2012 was The Man with the Iron Fists. Uh, the Rizzo, if you don't know who that is, he's a member of the Wu-Tang Clan and did the music to Kill Bill's films. Uh, thankfully, he cut it down from his original four-hour cut. He so wanted to really no. two movies. Yeah, he wanted to kill Billy. Uh, it was just a really sh- shit, set in feudal China kung fu movie. Yeah, someone takes gold and some other people want it, and everybody fights, and most people die. Yeah. Um, Russell Crowe is Russell a Crow. is an is an American cowboy kind of person. He's put on weight. Yeah. yeah, when he gets into like fights, it doesn't seem believable. Especially when he's fighting these like kung fu, like masters, and he's just like rolling around. <laughs> it's like like he should be chasing Indiana Jones down a like hall. Early, early Star Trek, you know, when William Shatner is fighting the uh, the monsters, and he's like, eh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You the can tell that it was shot cut down from four hours because there are massive jumps and massive plot holes, and honestly, you're just sometimes wondering who this person is and what they're doing. Mm. Um, looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it looked good. Um, you can see, you know, that he put a lot of effort into the sets and all the rest of it. But you can also see that this is an homage to Quentin Tarantino gone very well. Lucy Liu plays the same character she played in Kill Bill, except this time she runs a brothel. The lead guy, the Rizzo, can't act. Can't act. No. So he also wrote and directed the movie. He can't write or direct. Oh. Didn't do the cinematography though, so that's probably no, why that's that probably turned out quite well. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of a single thing to recommend. There are better kung fu movies. Not as bad as the Three Stooges though. No. No. Out of ten? Two. One. That's one and a half. One. And that's why you're the worst movie of the month. That's been December. We're not going to do a look forward to January this time. Because we're going to do a whole episode of 2013. Mm. Mm. So look out for that. That'll be up pretty soon after this one uh, so until then thank you so much for watching the previous episodes yeah it's we've um, been doing this for about a year now and we really appreciate any like or share or comment or anything that we get so thank you very much to our lovely audience and thank you very much to our lovely director Mary Burke way way hey. our other lovely director and editor and other all-round person with the hair Brian Lloyd who's the not hair. here so until next time <laughs> Until 2013, I've been Brogan Hayes, he's been Rory Cash, and that's been Mary Burke, and this has been my so series. <laughs>